We come to worship today, changed by the past 365 days in this calendar year. So much has happened, and yet so much has stood still. We have lost so much. Friends and family, siblings in Christ whose names we do not know by heart, but whom we have been called to care for and love as our own family, one family in Christ Jesus. We come to worship knowing God has been with us and God will be with us in the joys, in the sorrows, in all of life's big and little moments. We come to worship today, changed by the past 365 days in the calendar year. We gather here today as children of God, all coming from different places in life, different locations in the world, different life circumstances having transpired over the past several months. Today in worship, we reflect on the past year. We name the losses we have experienced, the loved ones whom have gone to be with the Lord, the lost moments with friends and family members, the missed adventures, and moments of solitude experienced instead of being surrounded by family and friends. Today, we mark All Saints Day, a holy day where we remember the saints who have gone before us, the ones whom we loved and the ones whom loved us. We remember the lives lost to the global pandemic which is still occurring in our world, the world which God created. I'm Reverend Jessica Hanley, and we at Quentin United Church of Christ are so honored that you have chosen to worship with us today as we remember our saints, remember the year that has gone by, and name our gratitudes for the future of God with us at work in the church and the world. Let us rejoice with God with us here and now with our opening hymn. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. with my brother in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it
God is with us here and now, and so are the saints who have gone before us. We take time to worship the saints who have gone before us in this time of worship. Brothers, sons, sisters, daughters, nieces and nephews, friends and neighbors, all beloved children of Christ. We remember them here in the stillness of this moment. We remember Dale Dishong, a beloved brother and son of the Dishong family and friend to many in the Quentin community. Today, Kay is missing her brother Dale and Jean is missing her son. We remember Bill and Barb McMinn, the brother and sister-in-law of Catherine Schott and a beloved family member of the Progen and Schott families. Their memories give them peace and comfort, and God knows their every need. We remember today Bobby Haldeman, a beloved cousin of Brian Haldeman. Brian will always remember Bobby. And we remember today Barbara Spangler Fath Myers, a former wife of Louise Brown's brother, Jack Matthias Fath, the mother of her nieces, Beth Ann Fath Maholland, and Erica Fath Thompson, the grandmother of Maddie Maholland, and Jessica and Chase Thompson. We lift up these names, which are so much more than names, O oh God. They are whole beings, lives which have been intertwined with ours. We give you thanks for the light and laughter which they brought to this earth, the stories which we will still tell about them, the memories which we will carry on. We rejoice in their reunion with you in the heavenly kingdom. We, were, we are all one family, united in your loving embrace. Let us now center ourselves with our breathing meditation, serving today as our call to worship. I invite you, wherever you are joining us from today, to center and ground yourself with your feet firmly planted on the floor. Push down on your feet, feeling grounded in the earth which God has created. Perhaps you are pushing your feet into carpet, which a carpenter like Jesus put in your home. A home filled with memories, laughter and joy, tears and sorrow alike. Allow these memories to come to you as you ground yourself in this moment. Breathe in the Spirit of God remembering the memories which have taken place in the space where you are coming from today. Allow God's love to fill your heart as you remember the laughter which has occurred where you are. Breathe in this moment. Allow the joy to come over you. The memories you have shared with the ones whom you love are with you in this moment. and breathe out, releasing any tension that you are carrying with you in your heart. Release the heaviness of this past year that has weighed us all down. Name your losses to God in this moment. Perhaps you have lost a loved one and your heart still hurts. Maybe you lost your job or you had to cancel a trip you had planned that was once in a lifetime. Name your losses to God in this space, knowing that God can hold whatever you hand over. 
Continue to feel yourself grounded in this moment. We breathe out, knowing God can handle the pain and anger we carry from moment to moment, the losses we have named, the losses of life, the loss of joy, the loss of certainty. We hold still, feeling God in the beating of our hearts. If you feel called, I invite you to place your hands over your heart, feeling the beat of where your love resides. And as you feel your heart beat, name the ones whom you love as your heart beats for them. And we breathe in the love of God with us in every beat of our heart, with every breath that we take. And we exhale together, knowing God is with us in every breath and every beat and every moment of life. And God is with us in this time of worship today. Amen. Friends, we know God is with us, but at times we fail to live out God's love because we are hurting. We fear God has stopped listening, and we are lost in the midst of our own despair. We name these moments to God, not as signs of weakness, but acknowledging God can hold what we cannot bear alone. Let us go to God in a time of silent confession. And let us join in one voice as presented on your screen for our communal confession. Beloved, we are still God's children, but what we will be in the fullness of our time has not been revealed. But what we do know is this. We will be like Jesus the Christ and saints of God. Let us consider how Jesus was revealed among us and pray to be more like Christ in every way. Jesus embodied the unconditional love of God. We pray, may we be more like Jesus. Jesus fed those who were hungry, whether they were a member of a church, of his church, or any church. We pray, may we be more like Jesus. Jesus drew near to those living on the margins and excluded. We pray, may we be more like Jesus. Jesus brought healing and wholeness to those in need, whether they had health insurance, whether they had money to pay for the medicine that they so desperately needed. We pray, may we be more like Jesus. Jesus hungered and thirsted for righteousness in a world that was so divided, a world so much like ours. God, we hunger too for for righteousness, and we thirst for justice. We pray, may we be more like Jesus. Children of God, through the love shown to us by Jesus, we can be sure that we are God's children now, 
The Spirit of Christ is among us in this gathering, and in the nature of Christ is revealed within us. We are becoming more and more like Christ each day, whether we know it or not. Therefore, let us live joyfully as God's people, saints and instruments of God's way, who are loved and forgiven in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now is the time in our worship service where I'd like to invite any children who are at home to participate in our children's conversation. And today you might see I have a special bag with me. Some of you might use a bag like this for groceries. And in my bag today, I do have things from the grocery store. I have animal crackers and macaroni and cheese and spaghetti and spaghetti sauce. Those are lots of good foods, aren't they? And they're actually not for me. These things are going to be going in our blessing box outside of our church. Have you seen our blessing box? Where is it located? That's right, it's located right underneath that carport outside of our church. And anyone who's a friend in our community, whether they come to this church or not, is welcome to help themselves to these goodies that are inside of our blessing box. And why I wanted to talk to you today about why I brought these things is because other people in my life have taught me how to care for others in our community. My family, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles have all taught me how to care for others and be blessings to other people. And today, as we celebrate All Saints Day, I want you to think about people who have taught you how to care and love for others. Can you name someone in your house or in your family or in your community who has taught you how to care and bless other people? That person sounds really great. And today, I want you to draw a picture of you and someone who you love who has taught you to be a blessing to others. And this week, if you'd like, with your parents' help, you can send me that picture. Does that sound like a great idea? Awesome. So today, let's end our time together with a prayer of blessing. Let's pray, friends. Dear God, thank you for blessing us with our family and friends, no matter how old or how young. Thank you for having them teach us how to love and care for others so we can be a blessing to each and every person we encounter. We give you thanks for our friends and our family and our pets alike. We thank you for being our God. Amen. And I thank you for being part of our church service today. I can't wait to see you again. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the reading of scripture with our collect. God of our ancestors, be with us as we hear ancient stories told to us today. Open our ears, our hearts and minds to see you at work in and through the world which you so lovingly created. We pray this in your name, amen. Our Gospel reading today comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. It's a story many of us know simply as the Beatitudes. Some of us may even be able to recite it by heart. If you would like, join me in the reading from Matthew 5, verses, 10 to, verses 1 to 12. You can use whatever version of the Bible you'd like. Today, I will be reading from the New International Reader's Version. Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are those who are spiritually needy, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who are sad, 
they will be comforted. Blessed are those who are humble, they will be given the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for what is right, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who show mercy, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. Blessed are those who make peace, they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer for doing what is right, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people make fun of you and hurt you because of me. You are also blessed when they tell you all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. Be joyful and glad. Your reward in heaven is great. In the same way, people hurt the prophets who lived long ago. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Beatitudes, what we've just heard, takes place at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry in Matthew's Gospel. It is, by all intents and purposes, his opening act, his debut performance in front of all of his followers. And friends, he makes quite a splash. He calls the spiritually needy, the sad, the humble, those who hunger for justice, blessed. Wait, what? How can you be blessed if you are poor in spirit, unhappy, always humble and never boastful, and lacking justice? Does Jesus not know what actually being blessed looks like? Money and status, good health and better company. These are the things that blessedness is made of. But when Jesus talks about being blessed, he's not talk, talking about being blessed in our 21st century understanding of the word, but about being in a fortunate state of life. That still doesn't make sense though, does it? How can the poor in spirit and those who suffer for doing what is right be blessed? But listen again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus is talking to this group of misfits, the ones whom he has healed before this inaugural address, he is addressing people who have been hurt, who have been ostracized by society and cast out, defunct and deemed unworthy. To be told you are blessed, not because you are healed, but because of just who you are and something belonging to you because of what others have deemed lesser than is what Jesus is doing here. Jesus is not telling people they are blessed because of their circumstances, but in spite of their circumstances, in spite of their earthly conditions, God's kingdom still belongs to them. And I think that's a message we could all really benefit from hearing right now, isn't it? Despite whatever shortcomings we might be experiencing, despite what might be going on in this world, God is still with us. God's kingdom is still ours. Regardless if we have all of the faith in this world or we feel like we're failing in our faith, the kingdom of heaven is all of ours. As we navigate this new terrain of doing church, I expect many of us may feel like we are going to be the ones being addressed in this sermon that Jesus gave. 
What does it mean being blessed in the midst of all that is going on right now? When we might feel like we are the spiritually needy, the poor of heart, what does God's kingdom at work look like in our lives, in the lives of our church community when we are going through all of this? And I want us to remember as we navigate this new and interesting terrain, we are blessed, not because we have money or status, but because we have one another. Just as those people so long ago gathered in a crowd for the very first time hearing this per sermon in person did as well. We are blessed because regardless of what is going on, whatever we are going through, God is with us through it all. God is in the interrupted Zoom calls when we can't quite figure out how technology works. God is in our midst when we look across the street and see a neighbor, a friend, whom we are blessed to call a sibling in Christ with, smiling and waving back at us. We are not blessed because of where we are in life or because of who we are, but it is because of whose we are that we are blessed. When we remember this, that we are God's people and that God has called us her own, we can truly see the kingdom of heaven at work here on earth. In the helping of hands, in the smiles under masks that only God can see. God is with us in the midst of all that is going on. And for that, we are all blessed. Let us rejoice because we are not blessed purely by modern standards, but because we are blessed to be part of God's family, one family with many members, who are called to live out our faith in this imperfect world. Let us continue to be a blessing and share God's blessings with one another, whatever goes on in this world. Amen.
Let us now go to God in a time of prayer. God of Adam and Eve, Abraham and Sarah, and so many ancestors before us, we come to you as so many people have years before us in a time of prayer, lifting up our praises, our joys, our sorrows, and our concerns to you, O eternal God. We pray today for all of those who have gone to be with you in this last year, O Holy Creator. We give you thanks for our siblings who have found rest in Christ eternal, and ask for your continued presence with those here on earth who miss their loved ones. Bring laughter in the moments where memories come, joy in the midst of despair, Make your presence known to all of your people who are hurting and missing the ones whom they love, O oh God. God, hear our prayer. We pray today for the children in our communities, the ones who are doing school in new and different ways, and for the educators who are learning with them. We pray that those children who hunger be fed, that the children who are scared of where their next meal will come from will be provided for, O oh God. God, help us be carers of all of your people. Let all of your people be blessed. God, hear our prayer. In the stillness of this moment, we are reminded of all that you have created and we give thanks for the days with blue skies and promises of tomorrow. God, hear our praise. From the depths of our hearts, we rejoice for the community we call church, that while we may not be able to gather in person at this time, we are still doing the work of the church in this world, sharing the love of Christ in our lives sharing everyday blessings. God, hear our praise. And we give thanks, O oh God, for our seasoned saints who have taught us so much here on earth. We give thanks for Marion, for Mary, Betty Lou, Mary, and Grace. God, hear our praise. And we also remember our friends who we hold in our hearts. We pray for Ken, Sherry, Tom and Linda, Tom and Corrine, Richard and his family, for our friends Brenda, Kathy, Vicki and Roger, and for your children, O oh God, Phoenix, Tim, Jan, and Rachel. Be with all of our friends and family who we have prayed for here today and whom we have held in the silence of our hearts. God, hear our prayer. God of our ancestors and children yet to come, we pray a prayer passed down to us from generation to generation, binding the threads of time, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The saints before us built churches, started initiatives, and cared for this planet that we call home. We too have been tasked to do these things. We give our offering today to continue the work of generations gone by, to continue sharing the love of Christ in new and different ways, starting new initiatives for our community, 
and sharing the love of God like never before. Come and let us give faithfully. If you are joining us online and would like to send your offering into the church, you may send it into our address, Quentin UCC, P.O. Box 1138, Quentin, PA 17083. Or you can give your offering online in the link provided in the description of this video. Let us give thanks for the gifts which have been given, the gifts which will be given, and the gifts which we share with one another here and now. God of all generations, bless the gifts given today. Allow future generations to see the work of the church as sacred and holy work. Let this work produce goodness to all of your people and let it be a blessing to this world. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let us rejoice in the work which the church has done, the work which the church will do, with our closing hymn. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know they feel the presence of the Friends, the time of worship has come to an end. Remember that you are a blessed child of God. In the midst of despair, God is with you. In the laughter of your soul, God is with you. Blessed are you, child of God. Blessed in what you do. Blessed in what you feel. Blessed in who you are. Go from this time of worship, reminded that you are blessed, for you are a child of God. Go sharing that blessing in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Amen.